Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 18. And in this segment we're going to talk a little bit about the vertical structure of a cyclone and what that exactly means for us in the atmosphere and also how it pertains to forecasting for some extent. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So first of all, I want to refresh your memory on something that we looked at, I believe it was in lecture eight or nine when we talked about, or it may have been before that, but in, we, in one of those lectures we talked about the gradient wind balance and how that uh, produces divergence aloft ahead of a trough and convergence aloft ahead of a ridge. So uh, so this diagram should hopefully be somewhat familiar. Remember that we, diver uh, we determined that you have divergence aloft occurring ahead of a trough, and by the mass continuity equation, that means that you've got rising motions occurring where you've got divergence aloft. So again, this is the same diagram that we introduced as part of those lectures. So again, divergence aloft, you'd want to have, that typically means you have got rising motion, which means you've got surface convergence. And as we've shown in some, again, in some previous lectures, surface convergence primarily indicates the presence of a cyclone. But if we go back to this diagram and also superimpose the surface pattern that we would expect to see. So the center of the cyclone at 500 millibars, which is faded here. So the faded portions are the, the 500 millibar parts of the atmosphere and this red uh, this red L, which is the not faded, that's the surface pattern. So that's the surface cyclone. But you see as we go at 500 millibars, the center of the cyclone is over here, but at the surface, the center of the cyclone is over here where this area of upper level divergence is. So this would tend to imply that as we go upward, as we go vertically, the center of the cyclone actually shifts westward. And if you take a look at some maps of a nice of a good cyclone a nice cyclone that's in its maturing phase you will see that as you go up the cyclone will in fact tilt westward with height and this is typically what if you were to look at a cross section of that this dashed line indicates the center of the cyclone as you go up so at the surface you've got this area of convergence and then as you go upward the center of the cyclone does in fact go towards the west so the center of the cyclone tilts west and that's represented by this dashed line here and typically when you've got a cyclone that looks like this, you've got a cyclone that's in the process of intensifying or nearing peak intensity. And this also tends to mean that you've got a progressive uh, wave pattern. So that means you've got a trough ridge system that is uh, moving to the east uh, at some respectable speed. And uh, this is in contrast to a vertically stacked cyclone, which is what we're going to look at uh, just now. So typically as the as the surface, the surface pattern evolves a lot more slowly than the upper air pattern because friction plays an important role in the surface pattern, whereas the upper air pattern, friction is not as important. So the upper air pattern tends to evolve a lot more quickly than the surface pattern. And as a result, as this trough ridge system evolves, this typically shifts the area of upper level divergence away from the, surf, the cyclone at the center. And as this occurs, this tends to result in a vertically stacked cyclone. So this is in contrast to the previous case where the cyclone tilted westward with height, the center of the cyclone tilted westward with height. In this case, in the case of a stacked cyclone, the cyclone no longer tilts west with height is in fact, um, it is in fact, if you go upward, it's situated at the same horizontal position. It's situated at the same X and Y coordinates. And as a result, since that divergence is displaced from the surface low, we have this vertically stacked system the upward motions are not as intense. They're kind of skewed. They're not perfectly vertical anymore or not as perfectly vertical anymore. They are in fact kind of skewed. So you don't have as intense of a cyclone here. And a lot of times you'll get more into the theory as to why this is the case in some of your later coursework. But this also indicates that you've got a weakening cyclone and also a cyclone that's probably not going to be moving any place. It will technically move, but that's why we use the term quasi-stationary. It's not perfectly stationary, but it's slow moving enough that we can call it stationary. So if you've got a vertically, so again, just to sort of summarize, if you've got a vertically stacked cyclone, that is a cyclone that is not tilting at all with height, then that means you've got a, that means you've got a stacked cyclone, and that means you've got a cyclone that's in the process of weakening, and a cyclone that's also going to be quasi-stationary. And this is typically a pattern that you'll see once the cyclone enters that occluding phase and that weakening phase. As the colder air overtakes the warm air, this is typically what you'll see, sorry about that, this is typically what you'll see at 500 millibars as the occluding and dissipating stage uh, take place in our Norwegian cyclone model. You'll typically see more of a vertically stacked system, and that's sort of consistent with what we 
uh, derived in our Norwegian cyclone model, where as that cold air overtakes the warm air at the surface, you've got a weakening cyclone, and this also gives you a vertically stacked cyclone as that occlusion and dissipation process begins to take shape. Versus the case where we tilt westward with height, that indicates more of the maturing phase, or even to some extent the developing phase. You've got a cyclone that's not vertically stacked, the vertical motions are nicely synchronized, and you've got a nice intensifying cyclone that is also moving to the east relatively rapidly. Although, I guess it technically could move to the west, but typically when you're looking at a cyclone, it is going to move west to east. That is the typical life cycle of a cyclone. There are some exceptions to the rule, but we're not going to worry about those during the course of this class. So that's going to do it for this segment on the vertical structure of a cyclone. And in the final segment, uh, we will talk about the special type of extratropical cyclone, which is the Shapiro cyclone. So with that, I will see you all in the final segment.